half in the bag. What the fuck is Shazam? La la la, another day pretending to fix a VCR. Oh, how does he use this telephone? How does he expect to play this night court tape? <laughs> oh, wasn't that tape the entire reason we're here? We've literally had that tape since 2011, and I just smashed it. Hey, Jay, you know, last episode, a lot of people were asking about that red spot on your shirt. What gives? Oh, it's actually a really funny story. Daily bats. I choose you as a champion. Say my name so my powers will become yours. Forget David Ayer. Forget Zack Snyder. Leave it to the guy who made Lights Out and Annabelle Creation to rejuvenate the DC Cinematic Universe. Shazam is possibly the worst looking, corniest, lamest superhero ever. It's literally magic that this movie turned out to be one of the better superhero movies of the last 10 years. Or is it witchcraft? Ooh. 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 Ad break. Ooh. Ad break. Ooh. Uh, so Jay, what did you think of Shazam? Shazam is so fucking corny, and I mean that in the best possible way. This is the first movie in a very, very long time to capture that Sam Raimi corny but still sincere tone uh, that we haven't really seen since the Spider-Man movies. Well, me personally, I loved it. You're sitting there watching this movie and, and someone might say, well, they're just ripping off a Marvel formula. But as I was watching it, I was like, this isn't, it has that feel of a Marvel movie, but not really. It's almost its own unique movie pulled from both cinematic universes. Cause there's the war of the DC and the Marvel. I get that. Marvel movies are like a cake where the cake part is the movie taking itself seriously. And there's a nice icing on top of humor. Sure. And Shazam is kind of inverted, where there's an icing on top of the seriousness of what's happening, but the, the, the bulk of the movie is a lighthearted comedy. Sure. And an adventure film, basically. Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of like what you were complaining about with Aquaman. Basically, everything you were complaining about that that, that movie was missing is exactly what is in this movie, which is that, that uh, relatability and that personal connection. Uh, I'm going to keep mentioning Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies because that's what this reminded me of the most. Uh, specifically in the constantly cutting to reaction shots of random normal people. There's there's like the worst extras ever in the Spider-Man movies and it's great. It's Spider-Man! <laughs> and this movie has that too where there'll be something exciting happening and then we just see how real people are responding and reacting. And then the fin finale of the movie doesn't take place in some sort of magical underwater fantasy world with hundreds of thousands of CGI creatures. It takes place in a like winter carnival and it's perfect. It, it, it's like they spent all, DC and Warner Brothers, they spent all their money on all the CGI crabs in Aquaman. And they're like, we only got some pocket change left for you, David Sandberg, go make your little movie. This carnival's happening down the street. <laughs> Can we just film there? It's a part of the, it's a Warner Brothers movie. It's part of the DC cinematic universe, if that's still a thing, but it feels lower budget than a lot of the more recent ones. And it, and, it, and this goes along with the director too, which we can get into, but it has this sort of like raggedy outsider feel to it mm -hmm. where it's not trying to be the grandest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you talking? It's it's a movie where a little kid gets magically sent to a cave and a wizard grants him superpowers. Yeah. The, <laughs> the premise is ridiculous, but instead of taking that premise seriously and like wrapping around a, 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 a changing his costume, glad they never changed his costume. His costume looks ridiculous and corny the yeah. whole way through. And that works. It's yeah. not, it, he, at some point he didn't go, you know what? I'm gonna use my Shazam powers to make my costume yeah, look, uh, look more uh, badass. Uh, no, that cape he has, <laughs> it looks like, like grandma's drape. It's so, it's so awesome yeah. how, how they left it the whole time. Um, and 
I mean, like you, you they did run around the this uh, uh, underground magical cavern world. Oh, the the mines of Mornia from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, and and they just had the door thing, and they, they put a little production in there. That's for the trailer. Well, that stuff's fine because it's used sparingly. Yeah. Well, David F. Sandberg is a very um, I think he's a very competent nuts and bolts kind of director. Um, and I, I, he did a great job with this film, but we should also credit uh, the screenwriter. This is a really clever, funny script. Mm -hmm. And I think those in concert uh, working together made a great movie because um, there's, there's a lot of, uh, of really well executed humor in this. And I guess I didn't expect that so much from the guy who made Annabelle creation? Well, there is an element of, uh, you could tell from certain scenes in this movie, much like the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies again, you can tell like, hey, this guy has a background in horror. There's a sequence, this movie has its equivalent of the, uh, the Doc, Doc Ock hospital yeah. scene from Spider-Man 2. And that's when we say the movie doesn't take itself seriously. We should say the story is taken seriously. It's not like the whole movie is a joke. No. It's just very lighthearted and, and has that kind of fun adventurer's tone. But it's serious when it needs to be, and it treats the villains as a real threat. Yes, on the subject of Spider-Man 1, right? Uh, similar similar themes and and i think that's why this worked as well as sam raimi's original spider-man was because it is a superhero movie it's about uh, being a hero and not about uh, i have to stop the bad guy no uh stopping the bad guy is part of a superhero movie and in the sam raimi film the the the, the theme was with great power comes great responsibility and that's the spider-man bit right and then Peter Parker's like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win some money in this cage match. What's your name, kid? The Human Spider. The Human Spider. That's it. That's the best you got. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Then when he sees the criminal running, he doesn't do anything. Yeah. That's when he realizes he's uh, he's going down a darker path. Mm -hmm. uh, and the similar themes play out in Shazam. When Shazam is, he's literally trying to make money. <laughs> by doing a, like a little lightning show and taking <laughs> selfies with people. He's like like someone in front of the, the, the Chinese theater. Yeah, one of those um, pathetic uh, yeah, yes. superhero costume people. And Because he, he's a kid. And so there's a little more, more of an excuse there. They, they, he uses his power to steal beer or go to a strip club. and yeah. little, you Do what a 14, 15-year-old kid would do. It, it mines every possible concept out of that premise. Every joke you could every think joke, of. Every uh, joke. In a good way. Not, like, in a good way, not right. like predictable. but Every like little fish out of water kind of. There's even a, a, a cute reference to Big, the movie Big with Tom Hanks. Yeah, so, uh, but over time, the kid, uh, uh, something, whatever the hero's name was. Billy. Billy. Oh, Billy, uh, Billy Peltzer. <laughs> uh, Bill, Billy Zane. Billy, Billy Barty. His Billy, name was Billy Barty. Billy Barty. Yeah, um, that was Billy Barty. The, one, of the, one of the many little plot threads is that he's trying to find his real mom, who he thought he, he just lost, but she turns out to be horrible white trash. Then he realizes, eh, okay, my foster family is better. That's a real family. Yeah. We well, may that's... be all misfits, but family is the key. That's, that comes into play at the end. It's all about it. family. It's about family, and that's what's so powerful about it. And that's why it's, it's so it's, powerful. It's a, it's a much better film about family than yeah. Star Wars The Last Jedi, which is not about family. What is The Last Jedi about? Uh, it's about... Uh, it's about uh, a woke lady with pink hair ramming a <laughs> spaceship into a Star Destroyer. <laughs> it's about a woke lady with pink hair teaching you that men are wrong about everything. <laughs> um, that's what Star Wars The Last Jedi is about. Yeah. No, this is, it, it, again, I keep saying corny, but I don't mean that in a bad way, but the, all the stuff with him and the Foster family, it was very, if I had a complaint, it would be uh, the, the scenes between them, him and all the Foster kids, felt a little stilted. It reminded me of like, I was thinking of like the Goonies or something where you have all these kids and there's the camaraderie between them, but this just felt like little actors doing their own thing. In Goonies, it felt like everyone was like talking over each other and it felt like real kids. You know, it's your top score on pole position. Yes, it's in here, Chuck. Look, we need it. It's a map of our coastlines. I guess this yeah. felt like movie kids. Right. Uh, it, it, it didn't come natural. Yeah. An issue is two storylines kind of eh, converging at the end. You have... Uh, Billy and his his 
foster brother who's crippled, who's the knowledgeable superhero kid. Yeah. And at the end, if he also then became a superhero, that kind of would have like resolved that. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. the, all the other foster kids becoming superheroes as well to kind of take the council seats at the end. Eh, it sort of worked, but in my, my cynical brain like turned on when the, when the movie first started because I was like, wait a minute, nobody could say finally with this film. <laughs> finally, a hero for little white boys to look up to. That, like nobody could say that about Shazam, right? Yeah. There's two, two white kids and Zachary Levi as, as Shazam. And then they go to the foster home and it's like the diversity house. And it's like this little black girl, a, a Japanese kid, and like a, a fat Hispanic boy. Yeah. And it, they're all like framed up. I was going to say, like, it's, was that, like, oh, that no. isn't a problem. The fact that the, the, all these kids are represented isn't a problem. But the way it's executed is like they come into frame and like, I'm here now too. Yeah, yes, yeah. It was executed a little awkwardly. Yeah. And it, it, it didn't give those characters enough enough time. Yeah. And, and really... They're, they're all kind of given a quirk or a, a little story beat. The one girl's trying to get into college. Uh, so they all have the, their the, own little the, thing. The fat kid was severely under underrepresented in the storyline. He had nothing. Yeah. He was the least uh, I, fleshed out. It's like, he didn't like, he didn't have that moment where he's going, the kids at school are making fun of me because I'm so fat. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a meme. You just take that. <laughs> just take that. Okay. Just cut that right out. Um, uh, yeah, like I, you know, I'm having, oh, don't worry, you you could lose weight. I've been trying. I've been trying to lose weight. Nothing works. The solution is uh, coincidentally become friends with someone who turns out to be a superhero. Well, it's an arc. It's a little arc. Yeah, it's a teeny tiny little arc. But he was kind of left on the on the wayside. You have your kids, and yeah. But see, it's like there's so much then to develop. Yeah. You couldn't really spend too much time on them. But it all worked in the end. Well, it's it's all at the service of the main story, which is yeah, the Billy Barty uh, learning to to open his heart to a family. Right. And that's that's the arc of the of his story, which is he's the protagonist. So. His, his advice to the older girl who's about to go off to college is is take care of numero uno yourself. Because yeah. she's like, oh, it. I don't know if I want to leave the f no. Don't worry about this family. Get out of here. Take care of yourself. Yes. So he has, he has a wonderful little arc. Yes, and then he realizes there's strength in your family. Yeah. You can't just do it alone. It, it made the the payoff at the end more satisfying. And it wasn't like, okay, now I've learned my superpowers. Now that bad guy is setting up a thing on the top of the Empire State Building that's going to shoot a laser in the I sky. I have to go punch I him. I have to go punch him over and over again. Yeah. It, that was part of it, but the bigger part was the supporting characters and the, the, the family. And right in the middle of the third act, he's still tracking down his biological mother. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we're back to this. Like, th this is giving this character a little bit of depth and some interest. Uh, I you like could this. cut out all the superhero stuff, and it would be like a charming little coming of age story. Oh, sure, sure. About a kid uh, learning to open his heart to his foster family. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, see, that's what you're craving is that, uh, that development of all those characters in the foster family. They they develop those parents real quick, you know? Yeah. In the first like five seconds, you're like, we're crazy, uh, real fun foster parents. We're foster kids ourselves. By the way, we live in a crazy house with kids. You're gonna really love it. We're laid back and we do this thing where we all put our hands on the table. And They're like, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> These are really good people. Yeah. Got it. They're not the nasty foster parents yeah. from Harry Potter or whatever. <laughs> uh, they, they're, they're good quality people and they really care and uh, you wanted you wanted more scenes with him interacting with the other siblings. Um, they built up the college-bound girl. Um, the the little black girl was fairly well developed because she had her little secret that she was keeping. She wanted to hug everybody, and he's like, "Don't fucking hug me. Yeah, I'm not your real brother." And then she's like. Yeah. She runs away. <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 that's her little quirk. She cut some quirks. And the other kid, eh, he didn't do so much with them. No. Maybe they cut some scenes out. Well, there was an indication that the, the heavy set kid was gay. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's that one line when they come out of the strip club where he's like, uh, not my thing. It's like, like a facade, though. Because it's like, oh, being gay yeah. has nothing to do with anything. Well, just throw labels on everybody in yeah, the movie. Yeah, a little bit of you that. You fulfilled right. your quota <laughs> that'll satisfy the mobs, the Twitter mobs. <laughs> It's crazy, right? What are your superpowers? Superpowers, dude? I don't even know how to pee in this thing. Jay, you saw something recently that said mothers were angry that 
they took their children to this because they, they went home crying? Oh, no. Somebody tweeted at us saying that the, the marketing was misleading because it makes it look like fun, goofy, kid ser- superhero movie. And then there's darker aspects to it. And so there, he was, there was like the demons scared his kids. And I feel no sympathy for him. Remember this? Wait till this, they get out in the real th- world. This this movie is a throwback to like the the eighties and nineties movies where like I was thinking of like I mentioned Goonies, but also like Return to Oz, where you can make a kids movie that has dark stuff in it. Yeah. And this movie isn't that dark. I thought it was kind of dark at the opening. I thought it was going to be darker. Uh, we get a cameo by John Glover, who nobody has seen since Gremlins Two. What you're supposed to be getting the bugs out of the building, right? Well, I would call these some pretty goddamn major bugs, wouldn't you? Huh? He's the dad of the villain, and there's a, a pretty scary car accident. Uh, especially yeah. if you're a kid, that'd be pretty scary the to see. The whole opening's pretty, pretty violent. It's dark and scary, and I thought the, the idea was that the dad died. I was like, that's a fucking dark way to open your goofy comic book movie. Turns out he didn't die, but then he died later in a much, much more horrific way. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a proper setup for our, our villain. He was horribly traumatized. Yeah. By magic. <laughs> Is yeah, it? no, everything is set up, like, his motivation is clear, like, because that's another problem with a lot of comic book movies, is you never care about the villain. Uh, it's getting better in recent movies, like Thanos, of course, but even, like, uh, uh, Michael Keaton in the Spider-Man Homecoming movie. Some movies are getting better villains, but there was that, that period, like, the, the early to mid uh, uh, Marvel movies, where you never cared about yeah. any of the villains. Yeah. Um, but, no, he has a, a decent enough setup, decent enough motivation. Um, well, it, it mimics the Billy's plot line as well with family. And yeah, that, that yeah sort of, being selfish and learning to let go, it's fine. The polar opposite of, of Shazam. He's, yeah. Personality-wise, not the most interesting, but uh, the gimmick behind it. Yeah. The, 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 he has demons that can come out and mist and, and materialize and do things. They, oh, they, they're yeah. in his body, and then they, they yeah. come out in, in fart clouds and turn into demon monsters. and. Yeah. The, the payoff of there's they have to have all the demons out. It's, it feels like a video game. Like you have to accomplish this thing and get all the demons out of his body in order for him to become mortal again. It's, it's very silly, but then the one demon that's still inside him is Envy. Pays off wonderfully. Mm-hmm. For a moment, like, I think what, what uh, post credit scene aside, which give no fucks about. I stop with the, stop, can we be done with those? Well, I, I like that, I, I wanted this movie to be separated from the DC universe because at, at, at first it was like, the foster care brother is like, opens a drawer and you see all these comic books and newspapers and I was like, oh neat, like, is that a comic book? And, oh, he likes comics. And I, oh, wait a minute. Superman's real Superman in this world. Superman is real yeah. in this world. Uh, what? That's fine. I was like, like, no, I didn't like that. Oh, it's no. not fine <laughs> because it, it, it makes Shazam less special. The whole pr- premise of the movie less special when there is literally a Superman out there. Unless this is the point when he was dead. I don't know. Well, it's not because he shows up at the end. You're right, and Jay. And it's, it's a very, it, that's definitely Henry Cavill, too. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely him. I'll do it, but don't show my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that made me think about, like... Wouldn't it be like, funny if they showed his face and he had half a mustache? Because <laughs> then the uh, CG animators... Ah, 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 well, again, was, they spent all their money on those, those underwater creatures in Aquaman. We don't have any money to digitally remove Cavill's mustache this time. It was Henry Cavill's... We barely had it the first time we did it. When he showed up in Shazam on set, he, he had half a mustache because that's the new like hipster trend. And oh, he, and okay. he's doing it. Okay. So they shot all of his scenes and they told all the CGI animators, remove the hair part of his mustache. And then they spent $70 million doing that. And then, then the studio heads came back and go, no, no, we want the full mustache. Okay. So then they had to redo it again. So then they had to digitally put over a full mustache over the digitally removed half mustache. Yes, yes. Okay. And then after all that, they looked at the footage and they said, oh, we didn't even have his head in frame. Yes. Someone got fired over that. David Samuel was, what? what? <laughs> it's, it's this tripod malfunction. <laughs> tripod malfunction. <laughs> Mr. Wood, Superman's head isn't in frame. <laughs> Nobody will notice. Nobody will notice. It's the costume that they'll see. <laughs> Don't you want to tilt the camera up, Mr. Wood? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they tilt the camera up, and, and Superman's going like this with the tape. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually David F. Sandberg's chiropractor. He kind of looks a little like Henry Cavill if he covers his face. 
All the kids are like, why is Superman covering his face like a vampire? <laughs> a lot of things can explain that ending, Jay. Look, James Wan blew all of our money on Aquaman. Your phone's charged, your phone's charged. What the hell? There's a little cameo by Annabelle. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure everybody noticed that. Maybe they did but it's, it's a great, uh, that, just like the, the reference to Big, it's not distracting. Sometimes when, when people try and put little in-jokes or references, it's like, it, it's distracting if you don't know what it is, and you're like, what was the point of that little bit? But no, they're in a little pawn shop. Annabelle's just buried in the corner there. Ironically, there's scenes in this movie that are much scarier than anything in Annabelle creation. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I, got, I got superhero chills a couple times during the film. Yeah. Rarely happens. Well, that's I, I happened. This and the Rocketeer. Yeah, I, I think the 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 World War II trench scene in Wonder Woman. There's those little moments where you want your your superhero to feel like they're doing something heroic. Yeah. And they're not just punching people through buildings. There's one shot in this movie where they're flying around, him and the villain, and they're like punching as they're flying through the sky, and it looked like a shot right out of Man of Steel. Yeah. But it's just one shot, and then it just cuts down to the, the city street, and Shazam just kind of goes, Poof, and I was like, eh. There I wonder was, if that was an intentional like no, dig at Man there, of Steel. There was an intentional slight. Was it? Yeah, they're, they're, the little kid in his apartment building is playing with a Batman and Superman toy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like hitting them against each other, and right outside, Shazam hits uh, Thad, whatever that supervillain's name was. And then he drops his toys and they fall on the ground. Mm. I, th I thought, I read it as a, a slight, you know, because yeah. this movie was a hundred million times better than <laughs> Batman v Superman and Man of Steel. Hey, our superhero has personal stakes and is actually being heroic. And what a what a novel concept. And a superhero film. And yeah. is likable. And is likable, which is a, an important factor. Um, and the likability translates to the actor Zachary Levi, who does a phenomenal job mm -hmm. at playing a 14-year-old kid as a grown man. Have you seen him in anything else? He, was he on a TV show? It's, it's funny you ask. I feel out of the loop on, on I, Zachary I see, Levi. I, I saw the, well, I, I saw the um, the Shazam trailer, you know, then many, many, many months went by, and uh, I, I've watched the show uh, The Marvelous Miss Maisel, and season two, he's in season two. Okay. And uh, he, he plays a pretty big character in season two, and I'm watching, I'm like, where do I know him from? And I was like, Shazam! He plays Fandral in the Thor movies. <laughs> and then I found out later that he is Shazam. Oh, okay. Sorry about your window, but night. you're welcome for not getting robbed. Oh, hey, what's up? I'm a superhero. Yeah, you never doubt for a second. You never think about the fact that he's, I always, like, whenever you turn to Shazam, I was still thinking of him as that little kid, just yeah. because of his performance. Which is always my problem with Big. Like, it's a fine movie, but I always felt like Tom Hanks was playing the character younger than the kid that he was supposed to be embodying. Right. Even when I saw that movie as a kid, I was like, why is he acting younger than the actual kid version of himself? Right, so. right. He acted like a five-year-old. Yeah. And, and yeah, Zachary Levi pulls it off perfectly where he's just got all those little mannerisms and just, uh, was, he's really good in it. Yeah. And, um, and like we said, they mined every possible uh, comedic beat out of what you would do if you suddenly looked like an adult. Right. <laughs> the, uh, the first thing that they think to do as grown up is go get beer. Yes. And, and then I'd like to purchase some of your <laughs> finest beer. I mean, just those, those hard cuts, the yeah. comedy cuts, uh, great. And then De the, dead center in the frame, dead that center perfect frame. comedy framing. Um, yeah. he, he comes out with uh, the beer and then they, they start drinking it. And I, and I heard a mom go, oh, no. <laughs> with kids over. Because, yeah, you see the little kid drinking yeah. a beer. And I was yeah. like, they did that in 2019? <laughs> and then, the, you know, they spit it out and they say it tastes like puke or something. Yeah, yeah. And then the mom goes, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, oh, no. Oh, uh, good. Yeah. So I've got a 12-year-old at home. He's going to start drinking. And I was like, okay. You know, my, my, my selfish grown-up humor version of me wants to see, like, 
them a drunk Shazam wandering <laughs> around and the other kid throwing up in a toilet and, and, and kind of get a little darker. But now it's like, okay, that's good. Yeah, no, that's, that, that's, that's enough. That's all you need for a movie come out like garbage can, fast food and, or yeah. candies and stuff. And I was like, okay, that works. Go then they go to strip, strip club. club. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's paid off later when he's like, I think of the one place to go. <laughs> um, gentleman's Club. That was a wonderful callback. That was one of those, like, the, the, with humor, you want it to be surprising. And I was not expecting them to bring back the strip club. So the fact that they do during the, the high stakes conclusion of the movie was perfect. Uh, a beer and a, and, a, and a strip club in, in a, a children's superhero film. Well, that's again. I, I feel like I'm in the 1980s. Oh, that, that's what I was saying is like kids acting like kids. They, they say shit a few times. Uh, it's just like it last year, where it's like it's it's refreshing to see things where it's not like all the edges are completely sanded off. Like not that this is an edgy movie, but that's why they call him David Sandberg. <laughs> that was a quality quality joke. I'm just, but you see, I'm pretty fast. Yeah. I'm fast. What are we talking about? Chosen one. Oh, you're like a bad guy, right? You literally did the opposite of what a superhero is supposed to do. Kids want to see scary shit. They want to see demons biting off people's heads. You can do it in a way that isn't horribly violent and fits in a movie with this more lighthearted tone. Right. Sam Raimi did it fucking 20 years ago. Uh, tons of filmmakers did it in the 80s through the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then there was a period where everything just felt so sanitized. And so it's nice to see people kind of re-embracing that. There was plenty of kids in the theater we saw it that were clapping it's right. okay for kids to clap in a movie. It's adults. Knock that shit off. But little kids, if they get excited, yay! Our, my hero did something exciting and heroic. Like, it's right. fine. And this is a very relatable film to kids because the kid becomes a superhero. Yeah. So uh, there was a, a one lonely bearded man in our theater who came by himself. And it's like, well, you don't have a friend to go with. You, you, uh, if you have a lady, she either didn't want to go or you don't have a lady, and you don't have children, but you're a grown man that wants to watch Shazam. <laughs> uh, uh, just stay home. <laughs> just stay home. <laughs> just, you can wait for it to come out in video. Just stay at home and masturbate. <laughs> don't come to Shazam by yourself. Uh, at, least, at least you don't have to suffer the indignity of going up to the ticket agent and going, one for Shazam. That's true. You can just use the little Autobot Matron now. Yes. Yeah. And, and no one knows what you're. No buying. one's looking. You have to, it's like you're walking into a porno theater. You're like looking over <laughs> right. your shoulder. Right. One uh, for Shazam. Don't wear your Shazam T-shirt. Shazam! Uh, I wonder because this movie is, it's not a kids movie, but it, it certainly appeals to kids more than like a Batman v Superman or Man of Steel, which are just like miserable nightmares. Um, but the, those movies do have their fans. There's people that defend the Zack Snyder stuff and that sort of DC, darker DC cinematic universe. It's different than the Marvel movies because it's edgy. Like then they go see this movie and it's like cute shenanigans. Shazam is a part of the DC universe. Yeah. Not my Shazam. <laughs> not my sh Hashtag not my Shazam. Right, right. Shazam should be fucking ripping people's heads off and smoking. <laughs> We drank that beer. He should have chugged the beer and then threw the bottle at some bitch's head. <laughs> oh, Jay, you've encapsulated the DC fanboy perfectly. <laughs> I, 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 this is the kind of superhero movie I enjoy uh, because it has all, all, it hits all the right beats for yeah. a superhero movie. And specifically, one, one good little sequence was the bus sequence when he's. That's that was a, a important plot point or yeah. plot device was that he's he accidentally shoots lightning and blows a tire out of a bus and it's his fault that the bus is hanging off the cliff yeah um and then there's that's some, when he has to learn to actually be a hero yes yeah right that's his first actual heroic moment other than the robbery scene which is more selfish kind of consequential he thought heroic. it was funny that he was bulletproof and right. yeah um but but and and that's a good moment too you're talking about extras and the characters because they're all falling from the bus and hitting the glass and that, that, he drags yeah. out this dirty mattress <laughs> and, like, and the, the guy laying there on the glass is like no 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 I'm yeah, not. yeah um and yeah they're not it's just, exciting and heroic but still humorous without the humor detracting from the the uh, gravity of the situation right yeah yeah, yeah. A, a well balanced so, Mike, would you recommend Shazam? Absolutely.
Bring your kids. Kids need to see some horrifying things every now and then. They need to see demons biting people's heads off. Uh, but, uh, ten and up. Ten and up. Five and below, no. Take them to... Well, don't take your kids five and below to any fucking movie. Keep them out of the theater, because they're going to drive me nuts. Yeah, keep them down in your basement. You know, in a little closet. You leave tall buildings in a single bound. Oh, Jay, you were going to tell me about that red stain on your shirt. Oh, yeah. Ad break. <laughs>